Friday Night Sports Extra is brought to you by your local Inland Northwest Honda dealers. Who burnt, who burnt the pop? Yeah. Oh, hi. Kellen burnt the popcorn. We're going to have to talk to Kellen afterward. Yeah, he got the unburnt stuff. Yeah, good stuff. You know what? One of my favorite nights growing up, Friday Night Sports Extra, was always Couch Potato Night. And it's an excuse to wear these ridiculous PJs that my wife bought me as a gag gift a while ago, and they've just been sitting in the closet. So, welcome to Couch Potato Night. First time, what, 15 years? Oh, at least. Maybe 20. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's been too long. And I, I hope you have your PJs on, too. we got our snacks. We're ready for some good football highlights. And you we know have what? a lot of them tonight. I didn't have the onesie. I literally just brought it when I could, but as a, you know, <laughs> on the basher pad, usually there's no clothing going on for couch potato night, but we, we decided that probably wasn't appropriate. You're a single guy. Your wife hasn't uh, bought you anything stupid because you don't have a wife yet. So, all right, let's get to the highlights here on couch potato night. Yep, the fair Saxons were sitting on the couch in the first half, so, uh, down 7 nothing. Their offense didn't do anything on this play. A little trickeration. Mitch Pike to Tim Kirby to Jalen Hicks on the old hook and ladder. And you're not going to catch that guy from behind. No chance, no way, no how. And we are tied at seven after the 70 yard. But the Bears gave themselves a chance to win. Less than three minutes to, to go. Ryan Rico with a 34-yard field goal. It was partially blocked, but it still got in. Bears up 10-7. But they couldn't hold on to the lead. Longtime coach Rick Giampetri, who remembers Couch Potato Night, the first one. His team gave up the lead with 45 seconds to go. Pike from five yards out. It was the only lead of the game for the Saxons. And they survive in what, in essence, was an elimination game, 14-10. All right. We go to Joe Alvey Stadium tonight. Rodgers taking on Mount Spokane. Wildcats up 14-0. And their defense would get in the action. Roy Hyatt picks off Cole Schaefer. Man, looks like he threw it right to him, didn't it? Returns it to the Pirates, 40. On that drive, they're going to give it to their workhorse in the backfield. Oh, it's like he's building decks. Pound, pound, pound. Mike Shoup takes it up the middle. 19 yards out, 20 nothing Wildcats. A few drives later, Hyatt this time on offense. Breaks three tackles in. Mount Spokane goes on to win it 43-14 to uh, as they are getting ready for the state playoffs. Kind of a log jam in GSL 4A. Gonzaga Prep, though, undefeated. LC looking for the upset tonight. It would have just made a mess out of the 4A GSL. We take you back to Joe Alvey Stadium. Uh, Gonzaga Prep and the Tigers. Third quarter, both props up three. Liam Bell dropped back, going over the middle, but he's going to get picked off by Justin Voigt. Going to return all the way to the 45-yard line. Tigers are in business. They keep moving the ball, going for the field goal, but it gets blocked. Falls right into the hands of Cole Witter. And guess what? There's a lot of giggities on this one. Giggity, 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 got 95 yard return. Holy cow, prep up 10 to nothing. That's one of the longest giggities we've ever had. Into the third, Bell's gonna pitch it out to Nick Johnson. He's gonna run it in from seven yards. And Gonzaga prep, yeah, there he is. Come on, Adam. Gonzaga prep goes on to win this one, 17 to seven. You know what, we're in our PJs. Time to check in with Dallas Hammer with last night's Albie doubleheader. Well, I decided to get in the spirit of Couch Potato Night as well. Now, it was a doubleheader of GSL action last night out at Joe Alby Stadium. North Central Indians playing host to Brett Rippon and the Shadel Park Highlanders. Shadel jumping out to the early lead play action, and Brett Rippon finds George Pillamai. He kind of just stumbles backward into the end zone, but a touchdown's a touchdown no matter how you finish it. Now, later in the first, Rippon, well, he wasn't a couch potato tonight. This time finding Sam Stratton in the end zone, and Shadle goes out to a 21-0 lead. Now, the ground game looked really good as well. Darius Savick batters taking the option handoff and barrels into the end zone. Shadle Park leads from start to finish on their way to a 56-6 victory. On the second game, Hugh High and Meade facing off. Mead jumped out to an early 7-0 lead, and Uhai's looking to answer. But Logan O'Neill's pass is tipped and picked off by Bo Skinner. He's got a clear shot to the end zone. Panthers take a 14-0 lead. Second quarter now, and the Titans do get on the board, handing off to Bryce Williamson. He goes untouched up the middle for six. After the extra point, it's 14-7. The Panthers, though, just too much for the Titans to handle. Josh Richter getting the pitch, gets across the goal line. Mead taking this one 21-13. Dallas Hammer rocking the flannel pants. Not too bad. Like that. Finally participating. That's nice to see. You know, we got uh, two. Th this is this is so see, awesome. Would you that. cut it out? <laughs> I knew he was going to throw well, it. Well, it's because he's not on screen. You know, he's just feeling left out. All right, we got more highlights for you. Post Falls taking on Coeur d'Alene. The Vikings looking to bounce back from that loss to Lake City. 
Trojans were down 7 0, but they get rolling through the air. Dalton Thompson finds Jacob Koski open in the middle. That's a first down, and that would lead to the touchdown of the night for post balls. Thompson to the near corner, and just getting in right there is Hunter Harmon. Tied at seven, but the Vikings would respond. They rode the back of Drew Berger, and early on in this one, he was like, hot night through butter. The first down run right there, and more Berger. This time he finds the end zone to make it 14-7 Vikings, but how about this? A close one throughout, and it's Post Falls getting the win over Coeur d'Alene, 37-36. to For AIEL, Lakeland visiting Moscow in a wet and muddy field down there. First quarter on third and goal, Tyrell Derrick sets up the screen for to a code of Tate Vandeveer, and it was 7-0 Moscow. The Bears looking to respond. This pass, though, tipped and then picked up by Kenny Cooper and hanging with Mr. Cooper. He's gone. Remember that show? It was a while ago. That's way back, Couch Potato Days. I do. Pick six for the senior. <laughs> Lakeland wins big 45-14. Okay, I got three toes out, right? Okay, I don't see if you can see them. Okay, that means there's three good teams in the Northeast A. Oh. Freeman, oh, you didn't even have to do that close. Freeman, <laughs> Freeman, Freeman, Lakeside, and Colville. Well, Freeman and Lakeside were playing tonight. The Eagles hosting one loss Freeman in this one. Second quarter, Scotty's up 16. Cameron Gay finds Nick Christensen. Oh, he's wide open. 40 yards on the score. Cuts the lead to 12, but Freeman would respond. Marcus Goldbach up the middle. Well, uh, he's somewhere either there. Wait, oh, he's into the end zone. There he is, 35 yards out, 25-7. Freeman just before the half. The Eagles in the red zone. Gay is picked off by Preston Hopman. Wave goodbye. They're not going to catch him. 90 yards for the score. Oh, he was running like he was looking for guys to get away from. Freeman gives Lakeside their first loss in league play, 53-21. Lakeside still has to play Colville. It could wind up with a three-way tie in that league. More Northeast State out to Medical Lake. We go. The Cardinal is back. Patch tab saved the mascot. Don't forget, your, your donations are helping. Third quarter, Cardinal looking to extend a five-point lead. Dawson Lack has some wheels. Takes it to the outside. It's out to the end. Up the sideline and no giggity. No doubt. That's a touchdown. 53-yard touchdown right there. Cards up two scores. Rams on the move. Quarterback Andrew Craver keeps it, but he's stripped by Tyler Garrett. Ball just laying there. Here comes Dylan Hutchfelt. He scoops it up and scores. That's a long run. He's gone. Touchdown, Med Lake. They're building a really nice lead. Rams, though, not done. Kramer's going to go airborne this time. Finds a wide open Noah McMahon. He's going to take it in easily, untouched the end zone. But the Cardinals are going to be too much at home tonight. They win this one 42 to 23. Hey, Hammer, tell me about some Twitter. Now, each week here on Friday Night Sports Extra, we highlight someone from the 700 ESPN HS social media team. Tonight, our featured Twitter reporter is Mike Crawford. Mike's a graphic designer who's been a part of our team since the very beginning. He's developed our website, he creates designs for Coog shirts and Eag shirts, and he has the uncanny ability of taking candid photos of KXLY employees out in the field. Thanks for finding time to help us out, Mike, and thank you for always making me look kind of good. Now, you too could be featured on TV, but first you got to join the team. Just tweet or Facebook us at 700 ESPNHS and simply tell us what team you'd like to help us cover. I keep waiting for James Lipton to just show up on the other side. <laughs> you know, he's like sitting there interviewing cards. Dallas, you know. All right, the GNL, <laughs> crazy right now. Clarkson actually beat Cheney in double overtime tonight. How about it's uh, East Valley and Pullman. Greyhounds looking to snap a four-game losing streak to the Knights. East Valley's up 9-7.5. This is Mason Petrino to Ben Moose. He gets in for six. Pullman up 14-9. Late in the third, the Knights face with fourth and long. Adam Fisher calls his second fake punt of the game. Wayne Woods tosses to Alex Bowdish, who finds Colin Spenlove. And Spenlove is spending time getting into the red zone all the way down to the five-yard line. And that would set up... The go-ahead touchdown on fourth and goal. Andrew Allen with the extra effort just gets in right there. And that was your game winner. East Valley beats Pullman 22 to 15. Field of the week. We've been showing great places to watch games. Medical Lake is one of those places. It's kind of a unique field out there. It's the one of the few fields that still has baseball played on it. It's a nice place to watch a game. And it's an easy place to get to at Holiday Field. One of the great coaches in our area, John Giandria, who was on the sidelines for a very long time and had Medical Lake football really rolling. Cardinals played in the King Bowl. That's what they used to call the state championships when the Kingdom was alive in 91. Led by Guy Morris and Chad Ripke, but they lost that title game, the Linden. 
And this was also home to Alexis Alexander, who ran wild for the Cardinals, played baseball with the Spokane Indians, and football for Eastern Washington. If you've never been to Medical Lake to watch a game, especially early in the season, on a nice, warm fall evening, that's a great place to go. Plenty of more highlights to come up. We're going to give you a quick timeout. Get yourself some popcorn. Get yourself some PJs. Oh. Kick your feet up. You spilled a lot more highlights, including North East 2B, and a lot of eight-man football coming your way when Friday Night Sports Extra continues. Did you spill water? No, pop.